Welcome to the Sanctuary Christian Fellowship. Today's message is called Cut It Loose. Easter is all about forgiveness. Moments before Jesus took his last breath on earth, rather than choosing bitterness and vengeance, he asked his Father to forgive them, for they do not know what they do. He understood how evil can mutate a fickle human heart. Some of the very same people who worshipped and honored him as he entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday suddenly turned against him, believing false accusations made against him on Friday. Jesus chose to be silent, probably knowing that whatever he said wouldn't matter to this agitated crowd that watched him and being humiliated and brutally beaten. Instead, he surrendered to his Father's will, not his. He willingly sacrificed his life in exchange for our sins. Luke 23, 46 says it. And uh, he gives account of what Jesus shouted with his dying breath. Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. No matter how unjust his death on the cross was, he still remains to love us and that's really unchanged because he has committed his life to us and he patiently waits for us to repent, those who haven't been saved, and to turn away from evil. John 3.16 says he doesn't want anyone to perish, but to have everlasting life with him in heaven. Second Peter 3.9 affirms that the Lord isn't slow to do what he promised, as some people think. Rather, he is patient for your sake. Thank you, Lord. He doesn't want to destroy anyone who but wants all people to have an opportunity to turn to him and, and change the way they think and act. Remember this, God is not, not in a rush. His timing is impeccable, always perfect. He loves us and wants all of us to, ch to change the direction of our lives if we're headed in the wrong direction. But time as we know it will run out one day. And only God the Father knows exactly when Jesus will return to take us home to heaven. Mark 13, 32 and 37 says, No one knows when that day or hour will come. Even the angels in heaven and the Son don't know. Only the Father knows. Be careful. Watch. You don't know the exact time. Make sure He doesn't come suddenly and find you asleep. I'm telling everyone what I'm telling you. Be alert. Before Jesus returns, we still have the opportunity to turn life around and undo some of the wrong things that we've done in our past, especially right now. So we need to let go of our hurts and have, and get rid of this negative impact that we have on our lives. Here's the truth we cannot deny. We all need to be forgiven and we all need to forgive. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, For if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. Can't be any plainer than that. This is one of the most compelling scriptures written in God's Word. There is no way around it. The Gospel focuses on this non-negotiable truth. We need to forgive. And that's really important. God takes forgiveness very seriously because it's a spiritual cancer that must be removed if we want to free ourselves from the bitterness that will eventually kill, still, and destroy every part of our lives. Unforgiveness is a highly contagious, deadly spiritual disease. If the sin of unforgiveness is not eradicated, it will eventually destroy every part of your life, spiritually, emotionally, Physically, socially, and relationally, you will live a miserable downward spiral life if you allow the devil to control you. This is exactly Jesus came to cut us loose from the devil's destructive grip. God is all about forgiveness. The sad truth is we live in a fallen world and we live with sinful, imperfect people. While I've been hurt by people, uh, we have disagreements with even those we once loved and called close friends. And yes, we will have disagreements at various degrees. Most are really minor can be resolved very quickly, but there are a few that's so hard to shake off. Every couple, every mess, every marriage, every relationship will encounter disappointments, 
hurt, anger, misunderstandings, and myriad of other feelings and experiences at several points in the relationship. We can't get around it. Sometimes the hurt may be accidental, while a few may be intentional. Issues can range from very minor to very tragic, like forgetting an anniversary or birthday, being insensitive, saying something mean or negative, saying something out of context. If not dealt with early on, it can lead to more, help, uh, more hurtful outcomes. The consequences can be devastating. No one really wins that battle. That's really, really difficult. As a pastor, I have, as a pastor, I have had to deal with um, the ugliness and trauma of hurtful emotions and situations in lives inside our church and outside of our church also. Forgiveness can, for, uh, forgiveness can be either become a major roadblock on the pathway to recovery or a process by which lives and relationships are literally, literally transformed and, trans, and restored and strengthened. Over the years, I think I've heard about every reason why per, a person wrestles with forgiveness as they choose to remain offended. The act was too great, too severe. The other person won't accept, won't accept their responsibility. He or she isn't truly sorry. They never ask for forgiveness. They will do it again and again and again. The person did it deliberately. I don't like him or her. That person has to be punished before I can forgive them. I don't feel like forgiving them. I can't forget what happened to me. Some, someone once said unforgiveness is like drinking the poison and expecting the other person to die from it. It's true. We can hurt ourselves more when we choose not to forgive. We can rationalize and justify why we don't want to, but God commands us to forgive. Why? For our best interest. Forgiveness is not just a one-time one thing. It's constant like breathing. As long as we're living, we will face many situations where we need to forgive and to be forgiven. Can you hear amen to that? As long as we are alive, we will have to forgive and ask for forgiveness because we live because of our sinful nature. Galatians 5 talks about okay, our sinful nature always battle with the Holy Spirit. We will, we will make mistakes and we will mess up. Knowing this to be true, there are two things that we should consider in advance. Here's number one is forgive in advance. And the second is try to, hear, uh, try to heal quickly. Yes, it's true. Hurting people always hurt other people. You can see this ugly cycle of hurt in all parts of our daily life. We can be right but still suffer from a bad attitude. It's good to remember when faced with disagreements, it's much, much less about who is right rather than, rather than what is right. That's really important. Look for ways to have win-win situations, not I win, you lose. So here are just two powerful forgiveness principles. The first, true forgiveness is crucial, not optional. Matthew 6 again, 14, 15 says, For if you forgive others when, not if, they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, here's the but clause, if you do not forgive others their sin, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. Unforgiveness is a sin, and God will not forgive bless you if you hold on to any kind of unforgiveness. Again, I want to reemphasize re that complete forgiveness can only be achieved with God's help. We cannot do it alone. Why? Simply because it's a spiritual battle that rages in each of us that only the Holy Spirit can successfully overcome. It's not by power, not by mind, God says, but by my spirit, said the Lord. We need His help. We can say that we forgive but still harbor feelings of hurt, indifference, and revenge. I know. The Bible tells us in John 8, uh, 83, 31 to 35, So Jesus said to those who believe him, If you obey my teachings, you are really my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If the Son sets you free, then you will be really free. Before a person can truly forgive another, 
he or she must first ask God to forgive them. After for God after God forgives us, there are two other people that we must forgive before we move on to new seasons in our life. Sometimes the most difficult person to forgive is you. If we're not careful, we can be our own best best enemies. The devil won't have to do anything to, to convince us um, that we're not worthy or we blew it or God doesn't love us and we we say it to ourselves and all he has to do is encourage us he says that's right you're not worthy Psalm 103 10 to 12 says he does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities for as as high as the heavens are above the earth so is the great is his love for those who fear him as far as the east is from the west so far he has removed our transgressions from us. God has forgiven us, period. No question mark. Okay, no addendums. God says forgiven. When we're forgiven, we're forgiven. One way to think of the East and West is that there's no beginning or end as opposed to North and South, south Poles. Uh, if we're going eastward, at what point do we be, begin going westward? Think about that one. Um, and vice versa. The scripture tells us that our sins are eternally removed forever. And that's really important that we understand, uh, we understand that. The issue is not necessarily whether or not God has forgiven us, but have we forgiven ourselves? It's not natural to forgive. We need the Holy Spirit to help us get the through His part to forgive. Forgive, forgiving someone who has deeply wounded us can be really, really, really hard. And sometimes it seems impossible. Jesus understands that. Forgiveness is not forgetting. The truth is that people have memories. Some have really bad memories. However, when God said in Isaiah 43, 25, I, even I, am he who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. It doesn't mean that he literally cannot recall your sins. He can do anything that he wants. But he no longer holds that offense against you. Praise God. However, however when we sin, we must immediately confess that we blew it and ask God for forgiveness. Don't hold on to it. We will not, he will not hold back forgiveness if we are serious about it. Forgiveness is not denying that the sin was committed. Forgiveness is not saying uh, what you did uh, to me was all right. Forgiveness is not is saying in spite of what you did to me, I am choosing to forgive you. We need to extend mercy and grace as Jesus did. Grace is receiving love and compassion that I don't really deserve. Mercy is not receiving the condemnation and punishment that I probably do deserve. Forgiveness is something we are asked by God to freely offer those who sin against us. However, trust must be earned. Amen. Life is filled with ups and downs and sideways. Life is dynamic and not stagnant. Ecclesiastes tells us that we'll have many seasons throughout our brief time on earth. And how we should live out our lives knowing that God is in full control no matter what season that we're in and what we're experiencing. The world can look upside down, but God is always right side up. Life happens many times unpredictably and inconveniently. Good times, bad times, rich and poor times, in times of sickness and in health. But in spite of the times you are now experiencing, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is great. Colossians 3, 12 and 15 says, So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, okay, whoever has a complaint against another, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you be in all beyond all these things put on love which is perfect bond of unity let the peace of christ rule in your hearts the second point is you cannot have true peace without forgiveness 
God created us with emotions, and it is important for a person to be genuine and authentic with their feelings and, and to give grace to correct and express them. The psalmist constantly said, and he said, pour out their hearts out. Lord, create a new heart in me. God, change my heart. When we went before the Lord, it's about an attitude of heart change. Some people need to talk it out and some people need to cry it out. Some people need to shout it out. Some people need to write it out. Some people need to walk it out. But the most important thing is to get it out and to cut it out. Amen? Otherwise, the hurt and pain and suffering becomes toxic and poisons your soul. This is a lot about, uh, it's just like about cleaning out an infection. I remember I had one. It's not fun, but it's necessary if you want to be healed. Infections are indicators that something has gone wrong. Okay, It's sensitive to the touch and left unattended. It often spreads to the other parts of your body. If there is some kind of infection in a relationship, we need to pay close attention before it becomes worse. And when it comes worse, it all goes downhill from there. Unforgiveness can morph into hate, if not if left unresolved. Hate is debilitating. It stops you from moving forward. It stops you from breathing sometimes. It will ruin your life. It will cause you to be more pessimistic and develop a bad attitude and negative, negatively controls you and others around you. While God does not give you permission to hate anyone, we are, however, are free to hate the sinful behavior directed toward us. Hate the sin while not hating the sinner. Difficult to do sometimes, and this is why we need God's help. When Jesus spoke to the woman caught, caught in the act of adultery in John 8, 1-11, he said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. What a loving, compassionate heart. Jesus intentionally separated uh, her from her behavior. First, he affirmed her worth by saying that he didn't condemn her. In other words, I still love you. I'm for you. I'm with you. Okay, and uh, but notice that what he said, he didn't condemn her. He did condemn her choices. He didn't want her to make. He wanted her to make better ones in her future. When he said, "Go and sin no more," this is an important principle about affirming the worth of a person in God's eyes as someone who He loves and died for, while also speaking and wanting to change their behavior, their sinful and hurt, hurtful behavior. Remember when God spoke to me about that, you know, I did a lot of uh, questionable things in my past. And when God called me to be uh, to his throne, he says, no, don't, don't do it again. It was difficult to do because my sinful nature fought against God for a season. But I, at one point in my life, I just totally surrendered. And my life hasn't been the same again. Remember, that, remember this, forgiveness has a lot to do with control issues. And it's really not about the other persons as much as it is between you and God. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin a period of healing and restoration in you. It is impossible to move forward emotionally, mentally, and spiritually and get healing until we've been released with forgiving. Okay, Asking for God forgiveness, forgiving ourselves, and, and forgiving others. Healing is usually not immediate. It it will take time and patience, but it will come if you don't give up. What happens when someone accidentally grips a live electrical wire? Okay, if the current is strong enough, it causes the muscles to really contract and actually you grip the live wire. Everything inside a person screaming, let go, let go, but it won't happen. You can try, you can try to treat a person's hand while the electricity is still on. Electricity has to be turned off before he can be treated. This is exactly what forgiveness does. It cuts off the current and the source when we release a person from our grip. Only then can healing begin. 
I'm fascinated by how many people need their spines to be realigned. Chiropractors treat conditions related to your body structure. Their goal is to relieve pain and improve function. They don't prescribe any drugs or do surgery. Rather, they adjust or manipulate your spine and other parts of your body to get them in the right position or proper alignment. Now, I, I looked at it. A chiropractor is, is a health professional focused on diagnosing and, and treatment of, they call it, neuromuscular disorders <laughs> with an emphasis on treatment through manual adjustment and or manipulation of the spine. It is in a, it's amazing as I watch some of these, uh, some of these uh, chiropractors and uh, how the body, how God created the body, the skeletal body to be aligned and how every disc has nerves connected to different parts of the body because of the connection between the spinal cord and the brain. How, it's, how a person riddled with pain was treated by a competent chiropractor. After speaking with the patient and x-rays, the chiropractor diagnosed what was causing the pain. After the treatment, many experienced immediate pain relief. Some needed additional treatment but left much better than they first entered. As a chiropractor positioned them into an, uh, to get into an area of the body that was hurting, the patient grimaced in pain. But after the crack, <laughs> their pain went away almost immediately. From pain to relief. It is the same when we experience the pain of unforgiveness. Our spiritual alignment is not aligned with God's. Sin hurts. It's painful. When we ask the Holy Spirit to help us to realign our lives, it might hurt for a while. But we will be healed and become stronger than ever before. Why? Because we are aligned with God. When He does... We will be set free from the pain of unforgiveness and experience the peace only God can give us. When the Spirit of the Lord is with us, the Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Free at last. Free at last. Praise God Almighty, we are free at last. We declare, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Let's pray. Abba Father, thank you for forgiving us. We're so grateful for Jesus' sacrifice that set us free. Help us to forgive ourselves and others we haven't forgiven for reasons of our own. Give us a heart of humility, Father, of great, of great gratitude, of mercy and grace. We need your help to break us from the chain of unforgiveness. Create in us a new heart. We ask you to restore the joy and our passion for you, especially now, Lord. We don't want to put it up for, for another day, not for another moment. We refuse to allow the devil to have a grip on our life. Lord, cut us off. Destroy his stronghold. Set us free, Lord. We want to live our life for you. We want to make a difference with the limited time we have on earth. Let our light so shine that by our good works we will glorify you, Lord, our Heavenly Father. Thank you for always blessing us and providing for our needs. Our first need is you, Lord. We can't live without you. We pray this in Jesus' forgiving name. Amen. Ako ho. We see you next time.